Welcome to Northlandia, a place to bring your curiosity because here you'll find curiosities. I'm Wyatt Buckner with the Duluth News Tribune, and I'll be your guide as we discover the unique and fascinating stories here in the Northland. Here we celebrate the region's distinctive people, places, and history. In this episode, we look into the man who sought to build a 200-mile highway all by himself. Let's venture forth into Northlandia. To introduce us to this ambitious Northlander, I'm joined again by reporter Jimmy Leverin. Jimmy, welcome back. Hello, Wyatt. It is good to be back. All right, Jimmy. So who exactly is this guy? When did this happen? And how did you even find out about this? All right. So let's meet Gordon Bushnell. Now, he he, he died in 82, 1982. But what he's noteworthy for is he really wanted a highway connecting Duluth and Fargo. Yeah, you can drive there just fine, but what he wanted was a straight line. And so in the late 1940s, um, in early 50s, he was a state legislator for Aitken and Carleton counties. He tried to get it into law to build this Highway D, as they called it, connecting, uh, you know, 200 miles straight line. Didn't, didn't work, didn't pass, but as he was out of office, he held on to that dream, bought up some land that would be on the route, and started building the road by himself using a wheelbarrow, a shovel, and a tractor. And by the time he was um, 80 years old, I think he had gotten estimates about 12 miles, um, <laughs> clearing through the brush of uh, Aitken County, um, north of Tamarack, um, I think. And, and anyway, yeah, so he um, he tried to do it himself, and he, he made some progress, but I mean, it wasn't like, a, he, he was clearing road, but I don't think he was like paving the road. So he was... Yeah, it was kind of his um, retirement passion project, and he gained notoriety because uh, I think he was probably known f- locally, but then uh, Charles uh, Kuralt, uh, he was the CBS um, reporter for On the Road, did a story on him, as did NBC's uh, Real People, and actually the, the Kuralt's uh, obituary, many of the obituaries out there right now note Gordon Bushnell's uh, you know one-man highway uh you know, as being kind of one of the highlights of, of his career, or most noteworthy on the road stories that that um, this famous CBS reporter uh, produced. So, um, anyway, it came up the other day on our new uh, Cloquet Pine Journal Journal reporter Mac. Uh, I don't even know what we were talking about, but he mentioned it. And he goes, "Oh, did you ever see that video online about the guy who just like who wanted a highway straight line between Duluth and Fargo, and uh, so he just went out there and like tried to build it himself." And it's like, no, okay, I want to look it up. And I looked up, and yeah, sure enough, I came across the real NBC's Real People video, some um, obits for Kralt mentioned him, and then I found um, in our archives the obit we wrote when he died, when um, this Bushnell, uh, Gordon Bushnell died in 1982. So, um, yeah, uh, kind of a, a bizarre story, but really fits Northlandia, I think. Oh, yeah. Man, new reporter already giving off some good ideas. I know. Already I, giving you some gifts. You got to give him some back. I know. I made sure. I made sure I wasn't stepping on his toes in case he he had planned that for uh, you know because it's it's kind of in the Carlton County neck of the woods. But um, no, he was he was he was fine with me taking that. It was a it was a good idea on his part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you had describing the story you had just sent me the the youtube link for the real people one mm-hmm. uh and that was kind of entertaining it was definitely like a news product of its time style right a uh, reporter goes on scene and like i think he even like the reporter made a comment while he was working or whatever about like oh these are new shoes like he yeah. new shoes or whatever like <laughs> which you know working man meets like on the road reporter which was kind of entertaining yeah and how they introduce the story too about like how uh they're trying to get a road and it just keeps on happening. So they got tired of waiting or uh-huh. something kind of like that, you know? So he just takes it in his own hands. Right. <laughs> and, and real people exist in the late seventies, early eighties on NBC. And, and I, that was well before our time, but, um, there's like a people laughing in the background. So there must have been like a live oh, yeah, audience right. component. Cause mm-hmm. anytime, you know, most of what Bushnell said was just funny. I mean, not, you know, not, not laughing at him. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he, he got a kick out of what he was doing too. He, he realized it was kind of crazy and kind of funny, but the things he would say would, would cause people to laugh. Like, um, I think, uh, one of the things that stuck out to me was that he kind of early on when he was starting this project, um, he started to experience some severe side pain, went to the doctor, doctor said, Oh, we got to get your gallbladder out. And, and this is the quote, quote, I went to the doctor and he said, I needed to have my gallbladder out. Well, I wanted to dig that ditch up there. So I thought, 
well, if I have my gallbladder out, I can't dig the ditch. So I thought, well, I'll dig the ditch first. So I started digging, and the more I dug, the better I felt. So he was committed to this. This is not medical advice. Don't go digging ditches <laughs> if you need to get your gallbladder out. But mm-hmm. he, um, yeah, he, he, he seemed to... He still's got he well he still had his gallbladder at the time of that uh, real people segment but uh yeah he uh <laughs> he was also asked if he was wasting his time building the road at that point he figured he had eight or nine miles complete and he he responded I don't know maybe I am but I enjoy doing it so what's the difference. <laughs> If you want to see that for yourselves, uh, that video link is embedded in the article on the, on our website, LuthNewsTribune.com. Check it out. It's quite entertaining. It is, yes. Uh, so how did you learn more information about him? Obviously, there was that, that video mm-hmm. and other videos out there, but they're relatively short and probably a little limited in terms of scope and information. They uh, compile it all into shorter video formats. So what did you kind of have to go off of for this? Yeah, that was kind of the, the one video I could find. I was trying to look for that crawl um, on the road video and I, I you know I didn't spend an enormous amount of time trying to find it but you know it, it exists in the archives at some you know like there's like a TV news archive at a university and you have to re- request and I don't know if you have to pay I don't know I didn't I didn't go through the, the through, through that but it exists out there um, again a lot of Kralt's, uh obituaries um, mention this story and this gentleman in particular as being kind of a standout from the on the road series and um, And because he was a state senator from 1947 to 1951, he's got a page on the Minnesota legislature website um, that kind of has some biographical information, you know, an old photo of him from from when he was a senator. Um, And then there are, you know, dates and headlines and stuff of, of, of obituaries that ran in like the Floodwood Forum, the Fargo Forum, the St. Paul Pioneer Press and the Duluth News Tribune. So I, with the date, you know, we've kind of got a big gap in what's um, digitally archived in 1982 when he died. And when the obit ran is not digitized. So thankfully, the, this, this website <laughs> listed the date of the um, obituary, which ran June 30th, 1982 in the Duluth News Tribune. So I was able to go to the library last night, grab the, the microfilm for June 1982 and go all the way to the end. And front page above the fold is, is the headline, Road Builder Dies, But His Dream May Be Given New Life. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's it's kind of funny. It's, um, so yeah, and, and, and other headlines at the time is uh, the um, Belushi Death Investigation Reopened, John Belushi, SNL. There's uh, actually a Israeli-Palestinian conflict story, so not a whole lot has changed. Um, but anyway, that led the paper that day and offered some interesting details um, talking to uh, some people who, who knew him um, from the legislature and from, um, you know, living near him and, and offered some some good details um, about him. Yeah, so... Let's, t- let's, let's go back a little bit and get more to like the root of what the problem was here. So how do you get from Duluth to Fargo? Obviously, it didn't sound like it's a straight line because that seems to be part of what spurred him on to do this. But sure. So today, if you were to plug into Google Maps, it comes up with three options. I mean, there's more than three ways to get there. But the, kind of the three quick ways it gives you are all between 242 miles and 257 miles and you kind of have to go either um, the furthest north takes you through walker minnesota the furthest furthest south you go by way of brainerd um and kind of cut in between them two kind of and anyway it's i mean it's it's not like we're taking you're taking interstate it doesn't get to tulane until you're fairly far um you know west you know the closer you get to fargo i think it becomes um some of the roads are are four lane but it's two lane the most part you know sometimes there are turns or whatever and i imagine 80 years ago you know when he was in the uh or or 75 years ago when he was in the legislature you know it was probably even less efficient so again uh, right now it would take you between 242 and 257 miles to drive there as the crow flies you know straight line downtown duluth downtown fargo is 222 miles so at best today a straight line would save you 20 miles and i guess you could maybe build it where you don't have to slow down at every town um, the estimates at that time were that this would save you 75 miles. So I don't really, I'm going to have to look at a map from the era because, you know, n- these aren't brand new roads, you know, that, that you're taking <laughs> today even. Um, so I, I, I think the 75 mile, 
you know, saving a 75 mile might have, they must have picked like the longest way possible and said, oh, it's going to be an improvement of that. But again, I don't know, maybe some of the roads at the time were, were, were in rough shape and you wouldn't want to take, uh, you know, uh, one road or the other and, and it, it would actually save you closer to 75 miles. But yes, yeah, so that's, you know, if you've ever wanted to go to Fargo and just hate the drive, I guess that's kind of, it isn't a great drive having to take two lane most of the way. And yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it, but mm-hmm. it's just funny that I don't think it would ever come to me that I'd take up, you know, more than 20 years of my life to <laughs> clearing the woods and trying to build it myself and really only get, I mean, at most the Duluth News Tribune obituary said he had, had made it 12 miles and that's kind of combined, you know, portions. He It sounds like he kind of connected existing roads sometimes. This, not all of the sections were connected, but when you added everything up, it ended up being 12 miles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he made it 5% of the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I know that you had mentioned that he had they had tried to get the the highway built, like, legitimately, like, right. through the means of, like, state funding and such. How long did they try to get that to happen, like, through the legislature? And why was, I guess, what was the pushback on it, I guess? Yeah, from what I can tell... It was kind of started in the 40s uh, by the, the the News Tribune obit for him mentioned the Aitken County Taxpayers Association really wanted the road. Um, and they, that's that's who was claiming it would um, shorten the existing route by 75 miles. And then as a legislator, he tried to get the, the bill passed, right? And the Bushnell tried to get the bill that would have established the so-called Highway D. And there was even money allocated for segments, but the actual, you know, it never made it across the finish line. Um, and I don't exactly know why that is. There's apparently a file at the Minnesota Historical Society about Highway D. And it, it, it's not digitized, but it, if someone wanted to go drive down to the, I think it's, in the, I'm assuming it's at the St. Paul location of theirs. I, I, in their, apparently in their Department of Transportation files, they've got a box or so of Highway D material if you really want to dig into it. Of course, I didn't have the, the, the time or dedicate the resources to, to doing that. But if you Google Highway D Minnesota Historical Society, um, you should should come across, you know, how to how to access that if you're, you know, eager to pick up where uh, Gordon Bushnell left off 41 years ago when he died. Mm-hmm. Although he had been, it sounds like shortly before that, um, he died in 1982 at the age of 81 and and not long before that um he had uh, a stroke that which left him at least partially paralyzed and so he wasn't able to continue the work so going back to kind of why it fizzled out according to the obit at the time the lawmakers kind of argued by that by 1982 us highway 210 um and then us highway 2 could handle the traffic the highway d in this now at that point was not necessary so uh, again um i'm guessing the roads were in much very different conditions um 40 years prior to that and and maybe weren't considered highways or weren't weren't um you know maybe maybe this would have actually taken 75 miles off but um today and probably even 40 years ago i mean really it's really only going to cut you down you know like 20 miles if you take the shortest route today instead of a straight line so yeah it's (laughs) (laughs) and so obviously he didn't finish no. the highway. I don't necessarily think he truly believed he was single-handedly going to pull off 200 miles, right. especially, you know, you think after how long it takes to get one mile or two miles, you think you'd do the quick math, like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if you'd maybe hoping someone else would pick it up and, like, continue it on or something, or if it was just, like, a fun, weird project for him. I- think that real people uh video said that he had estimated uh he would com- complete the highway when he was 130 years old yeah something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. the reporter i think estimated that yeah so you know in 10 years or nine years or so whatever yeah <laughs> but even then i was trying to do if he had been working on it for 20 25 years and he had only made you know by that point eight or nine miles I, I, I wasn't really following his math unless he had, I suppose, maybe some existing roads that he could tie into and that accounted for a lot of it. But yeah, I don't, I think he, I think he saw it as kind of a something to do in retirement and, but he was up, it sounds like, I mean, the, the, the news tribune obit at the time talked to a school bus driver who would every morning on his route, picking up kids would see Bushnell out there working on his highway so mm-hmm. um there was some talk at the time when he died that maybe it could become you know a recreational trail for atvs snowmobiles whatever 
it doesn't sound like that was ever officially designated. I tried to do some sleuthing to f- figure out where exactly he was, and there's some hints online of people not wanting to give it away completely. Um, sounds like it's kind of, you know, some segments kind of resemble maybe a snow, what you would think of as a snowmobile, snowmobile trail today, but a lot of it is, is kind of being reclaimed and, and um, you know, the forest is taking back over. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it was never paved. He was just clearing and No, and he stuff. was just using yeah. uh, his two tools were a wheelbarrow and a shovel. Exactly. <laughs> and it sounds like he had, he, he worked as a, in road construction in like the 1920s, I think is what the Minnesota legislature uh, website said. It's biographical information about him. So um, he had some experience and then, but um, yeah, it, uh, yeah, it just did the things people uh, get passionate about. It's... Mm-hmm. I love that. <laughs> and, you know, so obviously that project's now been over and done with for w- over 40 years yep. now. Has there been any, like, talk about, like, trying to bring it back in some ways? Has there been anyone championing for this straight line from Duluth to Fargo? I've not heard of anything. I've not seen anything. Maybe if you're out there listening to this, let me know. But, um, yeah, I think, I think you know, the existing roads do it well enough. And I, and I kind of I get kind of why I think there's kind of like a – it's not like driving to the cities where you're on 35 the whole time or mm-hmm. or something like that. You are on on um, you know two lane, lots of turns, slowing down for little towns. That, um, so I think it's a it's a minor inconvenience, and people don't. But there aren't people out there advocating for um, you know a straight line when um, you're essentially there mm-hmm. <laughs> already. There's there's you'd be saving 20 miles. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, people will do a lot of things to to save a couple minutes. Right. So. Exactly. <laughs> All right, and Jimmy, you noted here uh, that you want to talk about on the podcast here is what more do you want to know about Bushnell? Yeah. Because there's, as you mentioned when we were talking about that question, you, there's a lot of things you weren't able to find out that right. you're curious about. Yeah, I would love to know if you are like a descendant of him or, you know, you were a neighbor or knew of him, whatever, uh, drop me a line, um, email, phone, whatever. I'd like to learn more about him and um, about what you know about him. And if you know where this is, I'd like to know that too. If you know where his highway is uh, and what shape it's in, let me know. <laughs> and here's uh, with, you know, we're talking about like, obviously this involves a man pursuing a project that there's not really any real conception of being successful and doing it on his own, but yet he was doing it anyways. It's kind of like the, not quite the same, but you know, the old like greek story about like pushing the the boulder up the hill and never right, quite reaching right. the top you know <laughs> not quite like that because he never actually reached the top with it uh but his idea like that never being able to actually finish the project mm-hmm. do you feel like is there anything about this that you can relate to in terms of has there been anything that you kind of projects that you've worked on like mm. this is never going to happen but you're doing it anyways you i know? mean <laughs> house, house renovations <laughs> that feels like that's never going to end uh, i think that's probably one that most people could relate to is yeah. house renovations right right <laughs> other than that i mean that's that's what comes to mind because it's there's always more to do you could always be doing more so and you always leave things half finished and yeah, that's that's probably mine. <laughs> <laughs> and with that being said, uh, what is it about this that you think makes it unique Northlandia? Because obviously there's like, as we talked about, there's that thing that I feel like most we could relate to of that right. desire to finish, the work on a project that you deep down probably know probably won't ever be finished, but you're doing it anyways. But there's still something weird and quirky about, you know, trying to build a 200-mile highway. I, yeah, I think that's just it is that someone was so passionate. I mean, what caught my interest at first was, was just – this guy took it upon himself because he just wanted a straight line between these two cities. So he did it himself, tried to do it himself. And then you look into it more and it's like, this wasn't just that. He was also like an elected official and tried to go, it tried to do it that way too. You know, it, it kind of goes beyond just the, you know, this passion project of his in, in retirement and, and stuff. So I, I think just the, the being so committed to one thing for decades, I think is admirable and interesting and, you know, it's, I always like to know what makes people tick. Mm-hmm. All right, Jimmy. Well, I think we'll wrap up there. Thank you again so much for, for bringing this. I'm excited for, uh, uh, the full year of 2024 of, uh, weird, wacky stories to look forward to. We'll see you next year, Wyatt. And thank you for joining us on this venture into Northlandia. To read the article for this week's column, visit DuluthNewsTribune.com slash topic slash Northlandia. Next week, Jay Gabler and I venture to Hibbing to look inside the Pellucci Space Theater. If you enjoy this podcast and would like to support us, consider becoming a subscriber of the Duluth News Tribune at DuluthNewsTribune.com slash subscribe. 
If you or someone you know has a unique story that you believe can have a place here in Northlandia, let us know by emailing Northlandia at DuluthNews.com. Join us again next week and discover the extraordinary stories that you just might miss when you're in the right place at the right time, ready to step off the beaten path with no rush to return, here in Northlandia. Thank you.